What is up, people? <laughs> Welcome to another corner of my house. I feel like every sit down video, I'm in a different location, but soon I will be in my garage office because I'm converting my garage into an office. Anyways, hi. Welcome to 2023. We've been in we've been in this year for a while, but I realized I didn't do a video on stuff that I'm going to like for this year or that I like this year. But, you know, it's not really a yearly thing that my taste changes. I don't really love trends and I like to incorporate things in my home that it's not like something I only love for this year and it's going to go out of style. I like to incorporate things that never go out of style. So this is kind of a video of stuff I'm just into right now, I guess for 2023, but also beyond, you know, because it's just better that way. So here is some stuff that I like for 2023 and so on and so forth. And until the end of time, or, you know, sometimes we get sick of this stuff, but whatever. I feel, I feel pretty confident that all of this stuff I'm about to say, we are going to always like, I think. All right, let's get started. The first thing that I really love right now are day beds, specifically day beds in replace of coffee tables. I'm actually going to also personally do this. I decided I want my space to feel extremely cozy and loungy. So I want a day bed kind of like this. I'm hoping to work with someone that can help me create a day bed somewhat like this. I don't want to copy this artist, but I like the idea of having an area to put up your feet and then also like a little table to put whatever, you know, your cocktail or whatever, coffee, tea. So yeah, I'm really in to day beds as coffee tables or just day beds in general. I really want to lounge this year and I really want my place to feel cozy. I feel like it, it feels cozy, but I want it to be loungier. I want to watch The Bachelor with my feet up, you know? And yes, I do watch The Bachelor. You may think I'm I'm cool or maybe you don't, but I'm also, I like, I like a basic TV show like The Bachelor. I also really am into very large art. I have this giant red piece that I'm going to put in my office garage. And I also just got this new piece. I was working on set and I was like, hey, I really like that art piece you guys have. It's a movie poster and I'm very Italian and my dad eats a lot of mortadella. So I was like, this could be fun in my kitchen. And the woman was like, you can actually have this. I was like, cool. So I brought it home and it doesn't fit in my kitchen. So it also has to go into my garage office or I might sell it. So if you're interested, DM me because it's pretty cool. I really love large canvas art or large posters. You have to get it framed nicely though. The mortadella one definitely needs a new frame. But yeah, into really just large things in general for your home. Things that look like they've always been there. Which kind of brings me to my next point of really large wall units like the one I have. Now I'm obsessed with wall units. I love when bookshelves or TV consoles or entertainment centers or wall units look like they're built in to the home. I guess my design direction right now that I really love, and I don't think it's ever really going to go away, are pieces that look like they came with the house. It almost makes the space feel more complete. Well, it does. It does make the space feel more complete. Yeah, I just think the larger the piece, the better. I mean, take that with a grain of salt and do with it what you will. But yeah, have a big bookshelf on that empty wall or put a large canvas. Just, I like large pieces. Okay, all right. I'm also into a Scrooge candle. I bought these little beeswax candles off of Amazon. And I've mentioned these before, but getting a little candle holder that has like a handle to it, I think is fun. It's called a Scrooge candle. Well, like that's at least what I'm calling it, I guess. And I think they're just a unique little touch to put on your coffee table. I'm sure there's a bunch on Etsy. 
I mean, there's a ton of cool different candle holders right now, but I'm currently into the Scrooge. When I first moved into this place, my kitchen sink cabinet, the door below the kitchen sink had just like a general little towel rack that you hooked onto the door. Nothing special, nothing crazy, but I really love them right now because then you always have a cool dish towel on display. Usually I would just drape a dish towel over my sink, like the edge of it, but this place came with this like towel rack thing and I just like it because there's so many fun dish towels or linens that you can buy, vintage ones on Etsy, and just throw it over this like little towel rack. I'll probably link one down below from Amazon if I'm if I'm feeling it. Uh, but yeah, I'm really into mine. And I just added this like red towel. It's pretty general. So yeah, pretty, pretty achievable, I would say. As you all know, or maybe you don't know, I have a little store called Was. And I collaborate with a small artist to come out with a product whenever I feel like it, basically. And I do feel like it right now. And I've, I've actually been working on this for a bit with Kate, with my best friend, Kate. She is also a prop stylist and she just has really great taste. So we are collaborating on pillows, which is I'm getting I'm getting to the point. We like pillows that have piping and trim on them. So our pillows that we are creating, we're hoping to launch these at the end of March, but we're being slow because we're just busy. Also very social recently, which I love, but I'm not used to having this intense of a social life. Anyways, yeah, we love pillows with piping or just like a cool edge to it. I think it's just unique and it adds that little... English British touch to me at least I feel like it does or French feeling or just makes the pillow look really nice so yeah our pillows are gonna have trim or piping or whatever whatever this is called so stay tuned stay tuned for that or if you actually want to be updated just follow the was Instagram as you all know I like to have flower arrangements around my house and when I get sick of vases or if I just want to play around with flowers, I think it's important to have a flower frog. I guess it's not really like a thing in design I love right now, but you can do so much with flower frogs and you just stick them at the bottom of a bowl or whatever you want an arrangement to come out of. I even put them at the bottom of this little bag because I was doing a fun little prop shoot and then you just, they're heavy so you can just stick petals in them. So if you don't have a flower frog, I think you can get them on Amazon or you can get vintage ones off Etsy. And it kind of just allows you to play around with florals if you're into that. And you can create some pretty cool arrangements. I would say so. The one thing that I kind of already touched base on this at the beginning of the video, but I think my design style, I mean, I've always been comfort and like cozy vibes to my to my approach, but Comfort over everything is really coming into play as I'm decorating this space. Like the idea of adding in a day bed or possibly even getting rid of my two chairs right there and doing two sofas. I want the comfiest house without it looking, I don't know, too comfy. I don't know. I want everything to be comfy. I had terrible bar stools that were uncomfortable and I got new ones. And now that I've kind of played around with finding furniture for this place, I realized how easy it can be to find things that are comfortable but also look good. So I don't know, my approach for this year, or I guess just like in general and with decorating this place is comfort over everything. I guess not over everything, but most things. I want my place to feel comfortable. I want to sit on a comfy couch and a comfortable bar stool. I feel like that's pretty standard to ask, but comfortability is going to be a huge factor as I finish designing this space. I think you all kind of knew that, but I'm realizing it more and more as I get older. And I think when you start from scratch, when you move or 
you're just starting over. You kind of reevaluate what your needs and wants are. And I don't know. I guess I've always, whatever, we're moving on. Comfortability, okay? Right now, I'm really into putting art or small pieces of art in cute little places. For example, a lot of people have, you know, a photo of their grandma or their dog on their nightstand in like a little picture frame. While that looks fine, I personally don't think I would have that on my nightstand. Maybe. I don't know. But I think you should take that little photo and put it above your light switch. Put a little photo above your light switch and it just makes the light switch look cute. I did it for two of my light switches in in here of just like old photos that I had one of my dad and one of me and my sister just kind of stuck them there. And also above your door frame is a unique place to put a cool piece of art, a cool like horizontal canvas or whatever, stick it above your door frame. I'm really, I'm really uh, into unique art placements, which, which, which does bring me to my next point. If you have a linen closet or a pantry, which most people have a pantry, I guess, that doesn't mean that it doesn't need to look good. I discovered once I moved into this place that my linen closet should feel almost like my vanity. It should look cute in there. So I threw in a tray. I have a few pieces of art. I have some fun vintage bowls and some cool baskets. And that's the same for my pantry. Obviously, I live alone and it's super easy to keep this nice and curated. Whereas I guess if you have like kids or a big, I don't know, I get it, but you could still try. And I think just investing in a few trays like this, a few baskets, throwing them in your pantry, it can make it feel a lot nicer. Also throwing in art in weird places. I have a little tomato art piece just in the back of where I keep my drinking glasses because why not? Or in my medicine cabinet, I have a little piece of art as well. I also leaned a piece of art behind my sink. I just think little pieces of art or little vintage moments can be added into spaces that you don't always see. Whereas I think a lot of people think they belong out in the open, but why not have every little area feel good? Because again, that's good for the mind, you know, mental, mental health. Mental health X interiors. I've talked about this little tip before, but I wanted to mention it again as I have been appreciating it within my own kitchen. And that is keeping as much produce out on your counter as you can. Obviously, some things need to be refrigerated, but most things don't. Well, I don't know. You tell me. But having little wood bowls or baskets out on your counter is just such a great way to add in life and color and I just think keep fruit and veggies and literally anything loaves of bread try to keep as much stuff on display without it feeling messy obviously but I do think it makes your kitchen feel good I, I personally like having my tomatoes and my limes and lemons and my watermelon and oranges and I don't know whatever else I'm eating I go through phases of what I like but I always have a tomato. <laughs> and the last little tip or thing that I'm into for 2023 or forever is instead of buying new furniture, just reupholstering. If you've been following my channel, you know I got a lot of my furniture from vintage places and had it reupholstered. And it got me thinking, like, my couch from Chicago was It was a good couch. I mean, my dog did pee on it a lot, so I needed to get rid of it, and I actually didn't get rid of it. I got I, I gave it to my brother, but, you know, he was out of college and needed a couch, but I was like, the dog did pee on this a good amount. He just got rid of it. It needed to go, but if the dog didn't pee on that couch, it's a good couch. Instead of buying a whole new one, you could just get it reupholstered. So if you have items in your home that you're sick of, instead of looking for something new, just go to a fabric discount outlet, 
get some fabric and pay for someone to reupholster it. I got this couch reupholstered, I think, for $800 total. So imagine if you already had the couch. Then go buy some cheap fabric. Maybe find some fabric for $250 bucks total. I think I needed a total of like 10 yards to reupholster this couch. And I went to a very – I went to Rag Finders in L.A. But they have – Places like this all over, like in Pilsen, uh, Chicago, there's the Pilsen discount, textile and discount outlet. I can't name every city, but there's always a place that you can go dig around for cheap fabric and uh, just reupholster your stuff instead of uh, getting new things, you know? We're all about reusing and recycling, and I, I'm, I'm looking at my place right now, and a majority of my stuff is vintage. Either it's vintage that I didn't even touch, I just bought it and it looks great, or it's something like a sofa that I bought and had redone. And I think that's just so much more fun and you have such a more unique piece out of it than buying everything brand new. Obviously not everything needs to be vintage. There's some stuff that you want brand new, but I don't know, it's more unique if you want to put in the effort and if you have the time, and I don't even think it's that time consuming, to each their own. Everyone has their own approach and how much time they want to put into certain things. And for me, I put a lot of time into my interiors because I uh, work in this field and I have an interior YouTube channel, so I care. And it's just, it's my passion and my hobby. Interiors are life. Sometimes I'm like, I think about this way too much. I'll get anxiety sometimes over purchases that I've made and then by the time it's 11 a.m. I'm good but in the morning I get morning anxiety really easily where I wake up and I'm like I have so much to do oh did I buy the right thing am I gonna get this done and then I eat something and I'm good food does uh cure all and oh there's a guy I, I'm honestly rambling at this point Kate and I were just recently talking about how anytime we are stressed about work or literally anything. We just have to eat food. And I guess that's pretty common sense, common knowledge. All right. Well, I'm about to go head over to Venice because my sister is in town. My sister works in music production. Her name is Teague and she's cooler than I will ever be. And I'm begging for her to come on the channel. And she says, maybe one day, um, but yeah, she's my younger sister and she works in music production and she's currently, um, working on the production team for Rolling Loud, the music festival Rolling Loud. I'm actually going there this Friday. Well, this video, so last Friday. Yeah, she got me VIP. I'm going to Rolling Loud VIP. I don't know who I'm seeing. I wanted to see Lil Wayne. He's on Sunday. Um, but yeah, I'm going to Venice tonight to meet her, uh, for dinner because she has a very small window to say hi and then I'm hoping she comes here to my place I want her to see my place I don't know if she'll have time but if she does I want to film her reaction because I think she's really gonna like it because she also loves a cozy home um everybody enjoy your day and your night and your life and your house go enjoy you know whatever it is I'm honestly in a good mood today, but I feel like I'm coming off as like a little tired. I think I need a little food. I need a little food. All right. Uh, goodbye and um, bless up.